Do you need me to talk at? Oh, we're good. Do you yeah. check? Yeah, you're okay. fine. Uh, give me your name and spell it for me. Okay, Marie, M-A-R-I-E, Ebbing, E-B-B-I-N-G. And where are you from? I'm from Coldwater, Ohio. Okay, where's, where's that? Okay, if you're familiar where Portland, uh, Indiana, or Jay County sure. is, um, I'm directly across the Indiana-Ohio line in Mercer County. Okay, So right. close by. Very close, about an hour and 15 away. Was this program what brought you to Ball State, or was, was music what brought you and you discovered it when you were here? Um, this program, I guess, is what brought me to Ball State. I knew I knew I couldn't go into music education because I think it takes a very special person to be an educator, and I don't think that I have the qualities to do that. Um, I like working with people. I really like uh, working with people that know what they're doing, intelligent people, uh, excellent performers. It's very exciting, and uh, you're always discovering something new and always learning something. And so. I knew that I wanted to be a part of that, and behind the scenes um, is a, I think, is a good, very good place. Um, much opportunities there. Yeah, you want to be behind the camera and is, but instead of front, in front of the camera. Right. right yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, tell me about this program. What is it you're learning here? Oh, we we're we're learning so many different things all at once. It's. One of, the, one of the first things that comes to my mind is uh, time management, and I think that's something that everybody in college it, is trying to learn. Um, we're juggling lots of different things at once. We are required to have a minor in physics and electronics. Um, we are studying composition, both electronic composition and as well as acoustic. Um, we also have to attain uh, a junior standing or a certain uh, caliber of performance on our instrument, our main instrument, um, and so we're we're juggling lots of different things. So we're we're supposed to be knowledgeable scientifically and musically, um, and I think that's that's an important balance, especially for sound engineering, because there's a difference between being a sound engineer and, an, and a musical engineer. There's quite a difference there. What is the difference? Um, I think a musical engineer. You're always, you're always listening for a balance. Even as a performer, you're trying to listen for a balance between the soloist and the accompanist um, to, to create you know, the, perfect, the perfect piece or, or whatever it is that you're working on. And if you have that kind of an uh, ear developed, um, you can apply that in your mixing. Even though you're not playing an instrument, you're, you're, a whole, you're affecting the whole mix. Of, of a song, whether it's something you hear on the radio, um, it's just getting, just bringing the art across is something that's different from just being an audio engineer. That's just, you know, setting levels and just making sure everything's okay. There's quite a difference to me, I think. Got enough bass, got enough treble, got enough volume, right. uh, kind of a, a more of a basic approach to things. Mm -hmm. What is there so special about this program? This program, I think it, it really helps you to uh, I'm trying to think here with the, um, it really, it really makes you focus on the basics, the essential um, meat and potatoes, so to speak, of, of the technology, whereas some other programs, they boast um, certain types of equipment, they, the, the, late, the latest boards, the latest um, uh, effects units and everything else. And some other programs, they might tend to, to gear their students toward uh, just pushing buttons and knowing uh, which fader to, fader to set. And here we learn you know, the basics that we can, we can trans make an easier transition between one piece of equipment to another. Um, another thing that I think is also very important, just the music, like I talked about before, it's it's very important. Um, it really helps you as far as the technician, musician, or actor, or whoever it is, your client. I think it really helps the um, relationship there because they're not viewing you as a technician. If they know that you understand what they're trying to go after, then it's much easier to get to that goal, what you're working for. Um, and also the scientific knowledge that we're supposed to attain um, really helps. If, if you have just a little bit of knowledge, it really helps you in Troubleshooting um, whenever you know you're in a pinch or 
on the job. It's yeah. very important to keep your job. <laughs> so is there a future for you out there? I think so. There's, there's, lots, lo there's lots of different opportunities, lots of different doors to opportunity um, that this program can offer to you. And it's really hard for, um, I, I, for myself um, to decide which door to go to first. But I think um, one can easily lead into another. Uh, there's so many times that people start out in one field and they end up in something completely different over time and there's certain uh, doors that they go through to get to that point and I think just I'll be learning out on the job um, and it'll take me from you know this side of the world maybe to Europe or who knows but I'll I'll go wherever it leads me to. So. You hope? I hope so yes. Um, what do you want to do? I would like to get involved in film scoring. Um, I've been really involved with orchestral recording, um, both here at Ball State and at other music festivals. Um, there's lots of different opportunities that this program has given me that I can apply for different internships, um, Interlochen, uh, Aspen Music Festival. I'm going to apply to Tanglewood. Um, and just those experiences working with people that really know what they're doing, people that are really helpful and wanting to help educate um, and better the people that are working in the field. That's what I really enjoy. And on top of the music as well, I really enjoy the music, so. Can you make money at this? I, yeah, I, I, I hope so. Um, but no, you can make a living. You can really make a living. And as far as I'm concerned, um, making a living isn't just the money that you make. It's also the satisfaction that your job brings you. And I think with the training that I'm getting right now, it's go I'm, I'm confident that I will make a living and I will be very happy with what I'm doing. And so your time at Ball State, what has Ball State done for you? Ball State's really, really opened up my eyes to a lot of different opportunities that are out there, um, both, both on an academic level, but also on a personal level. There's so many different directions that you can take your life and um, Ball State's just a springboard for me. It's really um, opened so many, so many different things to me. Uh, it's oh, I'm losing my <laughs> losing my words <laughs> okay. here. I know you're going to okay. edit this later, oh, yeah. so yeah, cut and paste. But, you know, um, no, it's it's really helped me to see that there's so much more out there than just um, you know after graduation. There's you, you can take, you can really take control of your life and you decide where you want to go. And I've realized now that there's not, you know, just work after college. There's so much more out there that, that you need to uh, be aware of, you know, do you want a family? Do you want, do you want a career? Do you want to travel? And all those options can be yours and you don't have to pick just one. And you can take any one of those. Uh, options there and it's it's whatever you want to do in Ball State's given me a lot of ambition and courage to go out there and try something risky and and just go for it and be happy with what I what I receive so. great uh, it's sh it, uh, Tim yeah right yeah. pretend yeah. the camera isn't here you've heard of that sure. one before yeah okay Give me your name and spell it for me. Brian Peters, B-R-I-A-N-P-E-T-E-R-S. Where are you from? I'm from, originally from when I started the program, I was from uh, Lexington, Ohio. Uh -huh. Now I live in Bloomington, Illinois. Okay. So <laughs> just kind of jumping across. <laughs> so your parents moved uh, to yeah, Ohio, yeah. Illinois. Yeah. Dad changed jobs. Yeah, um, yeah um, pretty much, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. So how's Bloomington, Illinois? It's it's different than than Ohio. It's it's pretty flat. <laughs> um, kind of a transition between Illinois or Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got to see the Great Midwest anyway. Yeah, something like that. Um, so uh, we're going to put your name on the screen and your hometown. What do you want me to say? Uh, go ahead and say Bloomington, Illinois. Okay. All right. What year are you? <clears throat> uh, senior. Okay. Fourth year senior. Yeah. Okay. It sounds better for us. We stole it from Illinois. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> Wherever. <laughs> tell me, tell me what, uh, what's going on with the program? What are you, what are you studying? Well, right now I'm um, studying uh, 
basically computer synthesis. Um, that's some of the course. Uh, some of the other courses are that I'm in right now is the recording, additional recording technology, studying of uh, microphonic techniques, um, composition lessons, uh, and some of those composition lessons combine uh, those computer synthesis techniques into traditional composition means, um, writing for instruments just like acoustic instruments. Um, Stuff like that. Yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I can't. Well, I, I, I'm not going to get in very technical okay. type stuff. Sure. Because, you know, in video we work in sound right. bites. Um, so I'm going to take your most brilliant yeah. 10 or 20 seconds. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe three <laughs> seconds or something. My name or something. Well, uh, this is one of the few programs in the country of its kind. Is that what brought you here? Yeah, it. Uh, I was looking for something fairly unique. Uh, they did combine those aspects of music and technology and roll them all together and hope to find something exciting and, and like you said it's one of the very few places that I know of and it was something my mom actually found and she said well, why don't you take a look at that and came into Ball State and it seemed to sound like something that would be along the lines of what I was looking for. Uh, I was kind of interested in recording, I was interested in uh, just all the interesting sounds that, you know, well, what can I make this and what can I do with that? How can I creatively apply that, this and how can I creatively apply that and can I get something interesting out of it yeah. that makes sense? Yeah, oh, it does. What's your instrument? Uh, trombone. Okay. So we have a sax player, we have trombone. Yeah. We can get a, like a, a quartet. Uh, yeah, a small little band going. I can find, I need a piano, I need a drum, I need a rhythm section and uh, we'll be all set. Um, so, uh, when you came here, did you, you know, like play in the marching band? Do you play in the uh, symphonic? Um, or, or? I've played in the uh, the various concert bands before. I um, did a semester with the jazz band. I've played with the orchestra before. Um, didn't really do much with the marching band, just just out of choice. Um, but but pre performing music is not what you're after. Um, that's not your probably career. probably not what I'm after. I do enjoy it a lot. I do still enjoy um, playing in ensembles. Um, I'm currently in a trombone choir, um, and I still have to be proficient in my major instrument, the trombone. Um, all MET majors do, and so I keep up with that. And if there's the time to do it. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know where you find the time. Yeah. This program is pretty demanding. Yeah. But if you had your druthers career-wise, what is it you're going to be doing? Um, taking advantage of, of the new technologies that are developing. Um, I don't think that even my job may be actually physically out there yet. It may take a couple of years before my particular job that f suits me comes about. I think it just has to do with the uh, new technology that's coming out, uh, the internet, multimedia fun toys like that. And your, your education here at Ball State though is preparing you for that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of, at least in the last, you know, the years that I've been here, strong push on the internet, strong push for the computers. Um, I have a job over in, uh, as a computer lab assistant and that exposes me to a lot of the new programs that are coming out. Um, a lot of things that I'm interested in, in fact, those new programs and then I try to incorporate those into my studies actually. Kind of a part-time job, kind of incorporating. It's a lot of fun. What's so u unique about this program? What's the what's most exciting aspect for you? It's a really free, open, open-ended program. They, they don't really put constraints on you. You're free to do what you want, think how you like. They just They'd like to see something fantastic as an end product. And you work towards that, and hopefully you do get a fantastic end product. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, expand on that a little bit. In other words, uh, you get, you, you've got the training, you've got the basics. They've, they've given you the mechanics. Right. The rest is up to you. But Pretty they much. encourage you to develop that kind of initiative and that kind of creativity. Right. Yeah, yeah, about? yeah. It's, it's almost like a fostering of of, well, you know, well, what can you do with that idea? You know, show me what you can do with that. And sometimes you're, you're, you're grasping for, well, well, what should I do? And, and they don't want to tell you anything to put any limits on you in your creativity, any stifling. So it's just kind of a be excellent program, in a sense. I don't know. They don't take just any average dummy in this program. Um, 
No, they, they don't. They, those kind of get kind of get weeded out pretty quickly. We started with a fairly large class in the beginning, around 45, 50 people, and now there's about seven of us, in, at least in my particular class, left. So they get weeded out pretty quickly. And that's because of the, the science requirements? Yeah, the, yeah. And, and the music? Yeah, just, and... You're looking for almost a hybrid type of person. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what it was, it was based after. It was based upon a, uh, just what you said, a hybrid of a, um, a European tradition of a, a tone meister, and it's a combination of the sciences with the, uh, the music, the artist, and what, you know, forming something like that, a hybrid. I guess I'm lost for words. <laughs> that thing is scaring me. Yeah, it's the beauty of this is yeah. I just cut and paste. You Good. Know, just like your music. You know, you get something that's bad, it's gone. Oh, I love that. Uh, and so we'll take, you know, just the only the brilliant. Oh, man. Intelligent We're going to be looking for content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like your parents are going to be saying, man, you know, yeah. it's really good. You know, pretty excited. Uh, okay, so career wise, where are you going? I don't know. I, re I really don't know. Um, the new technologies, uh, multimedia, um, possibly sound design in movies, movie industry, um, or it could be something totally unrelated, uh, maybe working uh, for, I don't know, an internet company or something like that. I don't know. Well, can you, can you um, look at it this way? Uh, that's the beauty of what you're, where you're going. Yeah, because, it's... Because uh, things are changing all the time. Yeah. Can you relate that to the coursework you've had, the flexibility that they've encouraged, the, they've encouraged the creative inside of you, and yet it's preparing you for a future you don't even know what it's going to be yet? Can Correct. You, can, you re, can you relate or interconnect all those things for me? <sighs> Just the <clears throat> the multi disciplines, just the the various. You have to be, you know, you try to become proficient at this, and then you're into a new environment. So maybe just the changing of environments, and you have to think quickly, um, think creatively, and think efficiently, or something like that. I don't know. I really don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's good. I've got some really good... will be held against you. <laughs> okay, I will. Tell me your name and spell it for me. Uh, my name is Jason Bolte. It's, well, J-A-S-O-N-B-O-L-T-E. Where are you from, Jason? I'm from uh, Ferdinand, Indiana. It's uh, down by Jasper, if anybody knows where it is. Yeah, I do know where it is. Yeah. Um, and what year are you? I'm a senior. Okay, so we've talked to all seniors. Uh, Marie is a first-year senior. Mm -hmm. She's going to have a fifth year. What right. about you? I am a fifth-year senior. Okay. All right, so this means, uh, what, are you out of here in May? Yep, graduating in May. And so where are you going? Well, uh, presently I'm in a job search right now. Have a few leads, but still looking. <laughs> is this a, it, what kind of, you know, difficulty is there in this field? Um, it depends on what you decide to go into, uh, because we have graduates in all kinds of different fields. Uh, computer, we have many that are in uh, doing computer science and post-production uh, kinds of things and some that are in recording studios and some that are full-time composers so it, I guess it depends on what you're interested in. What are you interested in? Um, I'm mostly interested in um, sound reinforcement mostly. Um, I am the head engineer for uh, University Singers. Um, that's one of the things that we, you can get involved in when you are an MET major. Um, so there's lots of opportunity when you come here. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, there's, uh, well, in the sound reinforcing, you can um, join University Singers, which you are basically in charge of the entire system, maintenance and uh, performing, mixing, different things like that. And also um, with the jazz band, there's a few people that are involved in that also. But Keeps you busy. Yeah. <laughs> you do studying on the side? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the curriculum is very, very demanding. You knew that coming in, I assume. Uh, not really. <laughs> um, I, I came here because I was interested in music, and also I um, took a few physics classes in high school and got really interested in that. And uh, I was just looking through one of the books. I was going to come here in music ed, and I was uh, looking through one of the books, and I saw this program, and it just seemed to fit what I was interested in. And 
what is so outstanding about this program for you? Just that what we're exposed to, the, the different the different aspects of music that we're exposed to. Um, this program isn't really training people for a certain job, say like the business department is or the education department that are going to be teachers. It exposes you and uh, to all different types of things relating to music and technology from just um, theory and composition, performing your instrument, to uh, electronic music recording and uh, uh, even one of our graduate students is working on a uh, uh, digital digital animation right now so there's just a wide variety of different things that you can be exposed to and take advantage of what you're interested in I've heard things from some of the other people I've talked to about um, the there's there are no constraints on you they they allow you to have a lot of freedom and creative mm -hmm. uh, opportunity to to push and push and push and right. asking you to think out of the outside the box that, mm -hmm. that great phrase we yeah. have to use up. but is that a, a, a clear definition of what happens in this program yeah it, it I'd say it is um, you aren't when you are given a project or you're asked to do something usually in the upper level classes it's more of a creative endeavor um, Dr. Scott might say okay we're gonna for if you take composition, you're going to write a piece. Okay, well, it's what you decide to do is up to you. I mean, it isn't told, you aren't told what to do, and in the recording situation, you aren't told to record. You can record what you want. You can, uh, it, it, it's, it's a good opportunity to bring out your artistic ability rather than learning how to push buttons. It, it, this isn't a program that teaches you how to push buttons. It teaches you what is going on when you push a button and how to do that musically and artistically. That's going to make you more employable. Right. Kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's out there looking for you right now? <laughs> I wish somebody was. Huh? <laughs> um, well, like I said, uh, we have graduates in all different fields um, from computer programming to uh, post -produ production facilities. So, I mean, it's. For a graduate of this program, the what you can get involved in are pretty well endless in the technology field. Terrific. Well, yeah, yeah same, same spot. spot. Same few, few things change. <laughs> <laughs> the, the beard's a little longer. Yeah, just yeah. just just a tad. And the hair's a little longer. Yeah, right. I don't remember the ponytail yeah. back there. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Just a, a man, uh, you know. Either many faces or that's true. Uh, eclectic tastes. I don't know. Um, well, when I turned sixty, I decided I'd go back and be a hippie. I never got a chance to be a hippie, so. <laughs> uh, or, or my wife uh, uh, yeah. threatens me that that, that I'm I'm trying to uh, look like uh, one of the guys out of Nashville. So. Who else is Yeah, you got to fit in. Yeah. Right? Um, for our purposes, make uh, spell your name for me. Uh, say it and spell it for me. Make sure we get it right. Cleve, C-L-E-V-E, -E. Scott, S-C-O-T-T. -T. And your title? I am the director of music, the music engineering technology program here at Ball State. Mm. How long have you been here? This is my 29th year. This is your baby. <laughs> yeah. You created it, yes. I'm going to have to stop in a little something good. Yeah, okay, that's true. Go ahead. Um, so 29 years ago, Cleve, mm -hmm. um, you started this program. Actually, the program began a little bit after I got here. Bob Sherman brought me on board to uh, uh, start an electronic music studio. And of course, that's what my preparation was. And uh, in 1972, we decided that um, we were going to make a commitment uh, toward uh, involving music technology in our curriculum here. And um, curiously enough, the other uh, music engineering technology program at Coral Gables started in the same year. Uh, now they're a little bit different than us in that they're a really recording engineering program. Our music engineering Im uh, really implies a whole lot of other things. But uh, yeah, we started in 72 and um, we started over in the School of Music and um, they couldn't come up with enough room for us so they moved us out here and we've been here ever since. So how many years have you been out here? Then? We've been out here since 72, so that would oh, be, okay. yeah. be t uh, 27 years. As long as uh, you and I yeah. have been alive. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we're lying now. Um, so what is this program designed to do? 
Basically, it's designed to uh, make a, a hybrid creature that has expertise in both science and art, uh, i.e. music. Um, in 1946, Arnold Scherenberg wrote a letter to the uh, president of Chicago University urging him that uh, they established a program that uh, really married uh, science and art so that the uh, artist would have scientific expertise in terms of handling all of the new technology that was coming online. Um, I regard that as a, as a tremendous uh, a sense of foresight on Scherenberg's part and um, uh, unfortunately Chicago never did that. Um, the program, uh, as described, grew up in Germany. It's called the Tonemeister degree. And basically, it, it's uh, a double degree. You get a, a degree in, in electrical engineering and a degree in music performance. And we decided that, no, that's not the way to go. Um, one of the things that uh, is unique about our program is that it's composition driven. Uh, and by that, we use composition to exercise all of the technology. So the end goal is a, uh, a work of art uh, that is assisted by or mediated by the technology. So a student is then capable of taking their skills and doing what? Uh, well, of course, the technology that's coming down the pike at us is coming down so fast that the jobs that are here today when a student matriculates probably won't be here when they graduate. Uh, the good news is that this is a nuts and bolts program. We teach really basic stuff, basic science, basic uh, music, basic music theory. These kids have to have a minor in applied physics, electronics. They have to have... Um, uh, higher math, they have to have calculus based, uh, calculus uh, for the calculus based physics. They have to have all of the stuff that a music major does. And then they have to do, um, um, a lot of programs don't require you to be a performer and an engineer. And we say that performing is the nuts and bolts of engineering. You have to be able to use a microphone like you use a violin. You have to be able to use a mixing board like you would play the piano. Um, and in that regard, uh, we have people that come in here as a saxophone player and continue all four years as a saxophone. As a matter of fact, we have many double majors where they will major in MET and major in uh, tuba performance or something like that. The other thing is that they have to do a senior recital in comp. And that is split also, so half of their senior recital is acoustic music and half of it is electronic. So it, it, it's a program not for everyone. Quite obviously. It is, it, it, if you lay them against other programs of its type in the country, how many other schools are you competing against? Um, from the audio point of view, there are quite a few. But from our package, uh, there are only three or four out there like us. And I'm happy to say that in uh, at least two cases, they are modeled very much like our program and came much later than our program. Uh, our full-fledged MET degree was uh, launched in 1989 when we went to semesters. And so um, we're sort of the leader in the United States in that regard. Um, and I'm happy that, that uh, everything's worked out well. Because <laughs> you take some chances when you start playing with new curriculum and uh, particularly trying to integrate it with and keep the same standards that you have for the older curricula uh, that's around. You have to do some tall talking in some instances and some very careful planning. But, yeah, sorry, okay. I have to entertain. Oh. Didn't necessarily get along real well. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so, so now I've just kibitzed and I've forgotten what that question was. Let me think real quick. Um, what did you say? last say. Um, oh, I, that's where I need a notepad and write it down. Um, no. Yeah, and he said he addressed that. Um, it was 
uh, had some kind of relationship, but I don't quite remember. Okay. And I'm not sure it was such a burning question that kind of changed the, the course of this video. Uh, could change the course of mankind. <laughs> um, the, um, I, I, I find that the kind of student who qualifies for this program, this program, you said, it's not, oh no, I th one of our students said, it's, this program is not for everyone. That's correct. Uh, because it really does take a special person mm -hmm. who can handle the sciences and the, the creative side of the That's arts. That's right. So they've got a they've got a left brain right brain kind of kind of person you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you you know how does someone how do you sort these people out or do they sort themselves? Out? They sort themselves out. Uh, at this point in time, we have no admissions criterion. I mean, people come here and they say, "I want to major in MET," and we say, "Fine." Uh, it's the coursework that quickly separates those who really want to do it and those who, you know, are just f sort of fooling around. The other thing is that, you know, people get here and say, oh, gee, that's not what I wanted at all. <laughs> you know, they, they, um, uh, they want to do the technology by ear and stuff like that, which is okay in certain uh, environments. But um, as we get more and more digital, we find that uh, in order to accomplish uh, the many layers of different technologies going on simultaneously, it really requires some conceptualization that other engineering fields have not demanded before. One of the differences between us and the real world is that most of the things that happen in the real world um, are non-real time. If you go to Purdue and talk to an engineer and say, let's invent a what's it, well, he's got time to pour a cup of coffee and time to go down and say, you know, what color are what's it's? What do you think a color, uh, what's it should be and all of this kind of stuff. Um, when we move a fader, it happens in real time and uh, you have to be prepared for it. So um, only cameramen and uh, basketball players share that kind of uh, edge of the world with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least one camera. <laughs> or in the vernacular, videographer. Yes, uh, that's correct. Photographer. I'm a photographer, sorry. He, he's, yeah. I'm sorry, he's a photographer. I'm a photographer. Still like <laughs> They're just moving photos anyway. <laughs> yeah. I know what I was going to ask. You're talking about curricula. Uh -huh. Technology moving so rapidly demands that curricula keep up with the technology. The good news is that the difference between, between technology and science is uh, uh, great here. Uh, the science doesn't change over time. Those principia that drive the newer technologies are not much different than what happened with Ford and the Model A. Uh, the interesting part of that is that, that uh, uh, technology demands, uh, uh, unfortunately, in our uh, culture, demands replacement. And so if you have the basic underlying schemata for understanding what's going on, uh, then they can change, name, change names and they can change configurations and they can change a whole bunch of things and it won't take you long to get caught up. The difference between a technician and a music engineer is that the technician remembers all the colors and where things are geographically and if the board changes, boy, it's a new ball game. They have to start from square one again. Um, and so what we try to do is just provide all of the very basics. We don't do any bells and whistles kinds of things. I mean, sure. Uh, the CDs that the kids do in their senior year project, they're very, very good. But uh, they don't get, uh, you know, a Foley technique where you're, you're uh, uh, adding sound effects and stuff like We don't have the lab for that, for instance. Uh, but with the basics that they have, that's a piece of cake. With the basics they have, they can walk into Skywalker Ranch and go to work. They don't have to be trained. Uh, and that's what we're after. We're after people that, you know, uh, I think one of the most important things for our kids is everybody, we want them to be an individual. And we want it, as they come in as a freshman, we want to develop that individuality on a daily basis. 
Uh, so we're not a Madison Avenue uh, mentality where you've got uh, you know, gray pinstripe suits and there's a, a stamp of approval on you. Uh, we want different people. One of the compliments I heard from your students was that um, this program pushes them beyond the limits in their search for the creative, always asking the question, Come on, what could you what more could you do? What more can you do? What more can you do with that project without giving the answers, but but encourage them to find the answers? This is one of the, the, the difficulties. Um, uh, the teaching paradigm in this program is considerably different than you would find, let's say, over in the science area, where you know you have a, a curriculum and you've got to cover this and this and this and this and this. When you teach from a creative point of view, you can't do it as a block uh, idea. Indeed, when Bartok was offered the chair of composition, um, he turned it down. He said, you can't teach composition. <laughs> and, and you can't really teach creativity. All you can do is provide an environment from within which that takes shape. And, of course, that's what we do. And, you know, um, these kids are um, underutilized. They come out of high school bored. They hit us, and they, they, they think it's a matter of attending classes, and pretty soon they'll be, get a baccalaureate and, and go on and be, you know, whatever they uh, want. Well, we want them to daydream a lot, and we want them to think about things that have never been thought of before. Uh, are there other ways to solve that problem? Is there a more efficient way to solve that problem? Because time's money. And... You know, the guy that gets the call back is going to be the guy that does it quicker and does it better. And I guess the bottom line in this is that, uh, you know, there are two classes of people. There are winners and there are losers. <laughs> and uh, if you're going to be a winner, you've got to be best. And so one of our, uh, uh, you know, they get tired of me saying this, but you, you have to have excellence in everything you do. If you're not excellent, NBC's not going to buy you. Um, and it takes a very expert person to find a mistake in today's broadcast industry uh, because there's a whole lot of perfection there uh, and a whole lot of talent that's dedicated to that. You know, when I take a look at the quality of stuff coming out of Nashville, it's amazing. Talk about technology. And, um, you know, that is spreading globally. Um, that's the other thing that we have to worry about is that, that we're not just um, a little Indiana institution. We're part of a very, very large network of very, very exciting things. And um, I suppose these kids spend, you know, hour, hour and a half a day on the net, talking everywhere. Uh, we s purposely send them to places like IRCOM in Paris and um, Karlsruhe in Germany where, uh, you know, all the really good microphones are made. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's those kinds of things and, and those visions that they begin to come up with. By the time they're juniors, um, they're ready to try flying. And by the time they're seniors, they've been up several times and are ready and willing to take a DC-10 off the ground. And that's what it's all about, you know, uh, applied will. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it better than anybody else has. And uh, That's great. So, uh, yeah, it is. And it's fun. It's, it's been uh, a whole lot of fun for me uh, because we just have had some absolutely wonderful students come through here over the last, like I said, 29 years. We, you know, it goes back a long time. Okay. Yeah. Where are some of them working today? You know? Well, Mary Cook, who's going to visit us in March, uh, is a design engineer for Bose Corporation in Boston. Uh, Willie Moylan, who got his doctorate here in the mid-80s, is running the Sound Recording Technology Program at Lowell, Massachusetts now. A beautiful program. It's an, a four-year undergraduate degree, but it's basically a recording engineering program and very much tied to the industry. So it's really a good 
um, uh, if, if that's what a person wants to do. Um, we've got people in post-production, we've got people in quality control. One of my girls is chief uh, uh, <coughs> quality control engineer over at Meditech in Dublin, Ohio. And for instance, her uh, lab is uh, the place where the Casey Kasin show gets its fine tooth combing. Uh, and then they print all the CDs that go out to the, the, the uh, uh, syndicated stations. Uh, we have people in Hollywood. Uh, we have people in sound design. We have people doing post-production in Chicago. Uh, we have people, again, in quality control down at CINRAM in, in Richmond. Um, so it's a varied bag. We don't have huge numbers, but Understood. the people that are out there, approximately, oh, I would say 20% of our graduates go right up the street to Sweetwater in Fort Wayne as sales engineers. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's an extremely lucrative position, uh, but it's hard work, it's a 24 hour job because you have to stay up with the technology there. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what silence got up. Right. Tape-ins. Uh, yeah. We're still learning this board, so. Okay. Um, oh, I remember, are you on 9 through 16? Yeah, it should be. Okay. Um, that's the piano coming through, right there. If you want the piano on tape, you're going to have to open a new session. No, I was just going to play back You're just going to play back this? The Shostakovich, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, when in doubt, call Jeff. <laughs> um, I'm never kidding. Me all right. Give Jeff for a call. <laughs> hey, we're kind of looking for a
awful movies. Just awful movies. <laughs> yeah. Almost as bad as the records we used to play. Yeah. When we uh, we just inadvertently signed back on WBSD to play rock and roll. When the director. Oh boy. But um, this guy is uh, extremely complicated because panel nine, so it, it comes back from, so that you're monitoring Pro Tools because the, the, the way you should do this is route, uh, make, the, make the channel assignment of seven mm -hmm. to go directly to Pro Tools, which will buy, is, I'm sorry, pre-fader. Okay. So how, I don't understand now how you monitor. <coughs> if you're gonna send it to Pro Tools, it's better to monitor from Pro Tools. Now, if you just want to do it from the, from the board, then, then you have to make the channel assignment of... Yeah, I, don't I, can't I don't know what he did with it. See if you can hear it on the... Yeah, that would be returning on, on nine. Okay. But see, I guess my problem is I don't see a signal on seven yet. Right, that's right. You probably have to, well, it's monitoring tape in. Right. You see if you got seven down? See if you do mic, you should get something on seven now. Well, no, well. oh, there's a phantom powered. Ah. Uh. So now seven. Now you need to sign seven to the inputs of of Pro Tools. Right. And then you have